Welcome back to Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists. Ding, ding, ding. That's the school bell. It's time for Onset Teachers. If you're familiar with child labor laws, which I know you are, onset children can only work for a certain amount of time. The rest of the time, they got to be in school. And who better to teach them but teachers? Today on the show, we gather some of Hollywood's most famous, important, and awesome on-set teachers. So grab your pencil, make sure to bring an apple, and take a seat. Let's listen in. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. Did you get something from set? Oh, no. I, my kids are always bringing something into set. My kids are always bringing something. When you work with kids, that's my my wife my 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 wife runs a nursery. Yeah. Uh oh, factory reset. Turn them off. Turn it back on again. I'm good. I'm good. That's what you do with the kids. Turn them on. Turn it back on again. Do you need a cheese stick? No, I'm good. Do you need a cheese stick? My wife runs a nursery. She's always bringing something home. Is what I was just gonna say. Amazing. Yeah. No, it's it's totally it's 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 so true. These kids, they are like vessels. I always say these these kids are vessels for both talent and germs. Yeah. And germs and the common cold. Don't yeah. get me started on these kids with their germs. Yeah. Don't get me started. It is rough for me. Yeah. I I don't like germs. I barely like kids, but I'm here and I'm I'm excited to talk to some of the other professionals in the industry for sure. Yeah. It's awesome. It's really awesome to be here. Um, I guess we should all just go around and because I I know Let's some of it. you from just you know. The lot. Totally. <laughs> the lot. The of lot. course, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. The, the schoolyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't you wish they had a bell? Because I come from the school system. Uh, I don't know if you guys just uh, got your got your stuff before or after, but I was I came from the school system first, and um, sometimes I'm waiting for the bell to ring on the set of the Connors. Well, so they do have bells, <laughs> especially on multicams. They have bells when they go off, and then I they know, go up. but I mean bells for me. Oh, bell, okay. Bells when I know I'm done teaching math and it's time for social. And studies. not to be on the side of the studio, but I do think it would be difficult if they had bells just for you because. They would, and that's why I think it's so funny. I wish they would. Well, they, they should have, have they one. They should have one at a frequency only teachers can hear, because as we know, like there's some things only we pick up on. There's sure. something on the, or an called, app. There's apps for everything. Sure. So that's well, I'm so just saying, true. like if, if, if the bell sounded exactly the same, it would just be difficult to know what the bell was. For. It would be like a who's on first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, it would be a who's on first. My name is Louise <laughs> McIntyre. I am a onset teacher on the Nickelodeon show. Boys in the yard, and I teach six rowdy ten year old boys, and it is a blast. These boys keep me on my toes, always looking for them, always trying to get in those little heads. And man, uh, the, there's a stereotype out there that child actors aren't fast. These kids are fast. It's such a stupid stereotype that people have. I don't, know how, I don't know, I don't know how it started. I don't know how it started. You know when it started? <laughs> it started in the 20s when in MGM when they were feeding those kids painkillers all the time. Oh, yeah. That's why That's the kids the were so slow. They were feeding them in their Cheerios. And so everyone yeah. thought, oh, it's, the, it's their innate inability to run fast. But well, no, it's, it's just, the drugs. You know, it's, it's what we're trying to teach. We're trying to break stereotypes. And one of the major stereotypes we're trying to break is that set kids are not fast. <laughs> Because yeah. well, they're, they're wily and they're fast. And I would sure. also say they're all on Adderall now. So they're yeah. quite even they're quite fast. They're more direct with their speed. <laughs> you used to get a kid running around in circles. You could grab him because he doesn't know where he's going. On Adderall, it's almost like they're a missile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, they know yeah. exactly where they're going Try and they know the shortest route there. To learn its fractions. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> so Louise, Louise, you are working uh, with 10-year-olds, 6, 10-year-olds. Yes, so yes, 6, 10-year-olds. You're in the, the third, fourth grade curriculum? Yes. Well, I got to be honest. A couple of them are have had more successful careers. They're at about a second grade level. So okay. it's hard to, to get them all on so the same track always. So this is always. so true, which is not a stereotype, but it should be. The more successful you Let's are. Let's talk about stereotypes that should, <laughs> should be. be. I don't think we do that enough. What are the, let's stop right here. Instead of talking say, about what stereotypes we shouldn't say, what? we should guys, start. Guys, we guys, guys, guys. Look, and I don't want to teach the class because you guys are teachers. But before we get to dream stereotypes, let's maybe introduce ourselves. That's no, so I, true. I need to talk about what are the stereotypes we should be aiming towards. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> But yeah, I agree. Let's go around. Yeah, let's definitely go around. Um, my name is Eugene Frank. 
<laughs> you talk like a Eugene Frank. <laughs> and you tremble like one, too. I don't know what that means. I, I'm i sure that's pretty rude for Eugene's everywhere. Well, you know what I'll say, Eugene Frank? It feels like you're used to your last name being screamed. Like like the kids come in and scream, Frank! So they I'm guessing do. you're on some sort of I sports I try project. to introduce myself as Mr. Eugene Frank, and every time it just turns into these little kids screaming, Frank! Because most of them don't, you don't normally provide your first name willingly to kids no, right away. No, no but I, I, I would, I'm trying to because I've got two first names as a, as a name. So it's not always easy. Um, and, and I've caught on to it too. When they're screaming Frank, it's, uh, I've started introducing myself as that because it's just easier sometimes. Well, as teachers, we've probably all experienced this. Sometimes you fall into the profession and you realize, uh-oh, I have a name that's fun to scream. Absolutely. And it's tough. Yes. It's tough as a teacher. An yes. uh-oh indeed. <laughs> that's the number one mistake. You got a, a lot of kids need stage names. Teachers need their own stage names yes. too. That is such a good point. I knew a friend named... Uh, his name was Dr. Tony Kneebuckle. And these kids would <laughs> buckle his knees every single time. They go, oh, Kneebuckle, Kneebuckle. What a nightmare for that guy. Yeah, I can, I can imagine screaming it. Kneebuckle. How, what a nightmare. What set are you on, my friend? Frank. Right. Frank. Frank. Okay, don't be like Frank the kids. Frank the set. Frank. Thank you. I am on... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you have been warped by these kids. <laughs> You're thanking us for ridiculing you. What what set are you on, my friend? So I am on the set of the new HBO show, Mystery Kids. It's a dark, gritty show filled with violence set in a fantasy world. And these kids are really, 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 you know, kind of messed up. So it's another thing I need to approach with my teaching is both teaching them math and also working through some of the trauma that they experience on set. Yeah. Mm. Mm, so you're kind of a psychologist as well. I have to be a sort of therapist for these kids, and I'm not good at that. Do you, did you set any sort of class agreement or, or expectations for the beginning of school? Because it must be difficult. I mean, were you told you have to address these kids' trauma in class? Because most teachers say... That's what the counselors no, We no, don't have counselors on set. No. Nobody told me, and I just realized it on day one when these kids walked in, and they play their show as kind of they form sort of a revolutionary squad um, to take down some of the leaders of the this this really messed up world, and that's what happened in class. I said, we're going to be going over fractions, calculus. They're young. <laughs> we're jumping to calculus. <laughs> you have a lot of faith in these kids. I really do, and they turned on me quick. They unionized in a way I haven't seen. They've ganged up. They're mean. Um, so, yeah. It, you do seem so tortured, Eugene. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Who hurt you, man? <laughs> Listen. Who hurt you and tell them to go get back and get their SAG card? <laughs> I, I will say, so I have a, I have a, a one of uh, my kids, Joni, um, I think is on yours during the day because I do night shoots. Right. And yours during the day. And she told me that you have a very unique way of uh, teaching where you incorporate the trauma into the math problems? Exactly. I yeah. found uh -oh. it's the only way to break through these kids' uh, uh, big walls that they've put up is I incorporate their trauma. Yeah, do you have, there's that one she showed me. It was, it was Derek has seven attachment um, styles. Yeah, and so in order, to deal with, yeah. in order to deal with trauma, we always want to talk about <laughs> attachment styles. <laughs> Well, that's how you begin. <laughs> and But you say, like, if this person has seven attachment styles and this other person has four healing techniques. Yeah. How, how many attachment styles? How many holes in his heart are left over that he's not filled with? You can. Three. Very good. Good. <laughs> but that's enough about me. So, yeah. yeah, just to summarize, Eugene Frank teach fucked up kids uh, with therapy. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, my name is Bertie uh, Haverlacacus, and I... Haverlacacus! It's not as easy to scream. <laughs> yeah, it's Haverlacacus to set? Yeah, I'm Haverlacacus, and uh, I teach uh, uh, night shoots, as I mentioned. Uh, my primary uh, expertise is waking those kids up uh, when they have to be on set all night, and I we have to go to school at 3 in the morning, and I have to teach them. Um I am currently on set for The Swampening, which is a show about 
uh, horrifying children that drowned in a swamp, uh, terrorizing. I uh, love a that small show. Town. I love that show. Yeah. You're on what season three now? We're on season three, and we've just been greenlit for 15 more seasons. Oh, good! Yeah. Yeah. That's the first time that's happened in the industry. It's the first time they said we need 15 more years of the swamp today. They didn't even do that for Big Bang Theory. Well, these kids are aging fast because yeah. you know, as the, have you noticed on TikTok, on uh, they're always mentioning on that Gen Z is aging faster. Gen Alpha aging even faster. Oh, and yeah. that goes it's rapid. That goes with that stereotype. Yeah. that we're trying to get rid of. Not and still yeah, yeah. I, have, I have a six-year-old with a, a comb over like a balding comb over and it's embarrassing to see him try to cover it he's balding he's losing it i'm telling him man i'm sorry buddy you're losing it you know uh it's i a mean bummer. 15 seasons in a row is such a good idea because at that yeah. age you need to lock them down lock like that in. well yeah, yeah. We're, we're shooting this year for 20 years from now you know what i mean we're just we're just constantly and it's good because we can just power through with these swamp kids this is what happened to chester on you guys know chester he does stranger yeah. things yeah, yeah yeah right and he he's been there for a year well, he's had to switch. The, I know the onset teacher for Stranger Things has, because the kids have graduated past when they would still be in school, yeah. but they still have to go to onset yeah. school. And I know he's teaching them woodworking now. Yeah, poor yeah. Chester has gone from toddler work all the way to college level classes. Yeah, now, now trade he's doing school. Yeah. I heard he's doing trade Literal school. Trade yeah. school. Yeah, exactly. He's teaching one of them makeup. Yeah, one of them. <laughs> And we won't tell you one which kid. one. We're not allowed to tell you. No, which that's one. a HIPAA thing. We it, can't tell you which kid is learning makeup. Well, I'll tell we you have which HIPAA kid. laws. And also, for me, it's always strange that the makeup artist didn't just teach him makeup. Yeah. No, he needs like... a teacher. Well, and I will say, speaking of makeup, you know, the swamping, the biggest challenge for me when I'm teaching um, is these kids are horrifying looking. They are so scary. Oh, they're spooky to teach. 3 a.m. So, in full so, makeup. They're covered in just, they're just covered in, in, in moss and they look so scary. And sometimes I, I imagine hearing about what I'm doing 10 years ago and like just getting a screenshot of exactly what's happening in my life. And I see myself, you know, with the, uh, the specifics of the Declaration of Independence on the board and then just a pan of like 12 of the spookiest kids in the world. At 3 a.m. Yeah, it's like, I'm, it's like I'm trying to get my paralysis demons to learn something. It's really fucking weird. If I'm well, isn't there that you. picture of you um, teaching that kid who's covered in fake eczema? Yeah. But it looks like, and you have a ruler... One of the spookiest things a kid can be covered in is fake well, eczema. Well, no, it's like it's like the swampening eczema, so yeah, it's yeah. like very heightened. And... It's yeah, egg. It's literal eggs. It's it's, it's frog eggs. eggs. Right. Emma. Yeah. It's and frog it's eggs all... popping out of someone's collar. Yeah, Boom. and you're like holding the the ruler, and it looks like you're touching his skin a little bit, but yeah. it's just the picture. Yeah, they tried um, to get me on that one. Yeah, they tried to get your ass. There's an anonymous person on set that's trying to get me, and I don't know who it is. And they're very good at covering their tracks. They won't get me. A gossip girl, if you will. <laughs> I think. Does your set have a gossip girl? Oh, my set has a gossip girl. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. it's really interesting. I think it's one of the boys, which is interesting, really? but I can't tell. I it can't tell. I have no idea. One of the boys. We've got a gossip grip. It's a mess. <laughs> you have a gossip grip. Ooh, XOXO that's a gossip grip. Because <laughs> they, they're everywhere and nowhere. You never know where a grip is and isn't. They could be up in the rafter. Yeah. You could be talking. They are here. You so know, we don't know which me. grip is Excellent. the gossip grip, but it has ruined the set life. It is <laughs> absolutely destroyed. Because a big part of set is swapping secrets, but it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. The grips are everywhere. That's awful. Yeah. Um, hi, guys. My name is Sarah Beth Tiener. Um, Sarah Beth Tiener, and I am um, the ripe age of 21, just turned 21. Congrats. Um, thank you so much. I'm one of those kids that just like ripped through college in high in my high school years. And I just wanted to teach, but I also like kind of love the industry. Hmm. I love the lights. I love actors. I think they're amazing. So I, I immediately wanted to go into teaching, but I wanted something a little more exciting. So um, I am a onset teacher for TLC, an exclusive agreement. Mm. Um, so I did. What show on TLC do you? I do. I, I jump between a bunch of them. Um, most recently, I did the 18th season of John K Plus 8. Did all Whoa. the kiddos. Those yeah. kids oh, are yeah. 30 now. The they brought them back. They brought them the back. Well, now they're having grandchildren. So mm. if you pay attention, yeah. And sometimes I'll I do. Don't. I'll even do like home improvement. Not home improvement. Um. Extreme home makeover. Extreme home makeover. Wow. I do kids that I'm meeting 
just that day usually sometimes um, someone will bring on their kids and by law people don't know this but by law they have to come into school even now some some teachers they'll have they'll be a kid's teacher for the full season right and that more emulates what a school looks like yeah but there are one-off episodes and no matter what if a kid is on set he has to go to school that day with, and that's a bummer because yeah. especially on Extreme Home Makeover, you know, usually it's this family with these five kids and they're getting this completely new house. And usually while the house is being renovated, they send them to Disneyland. And I know that you go with them yeah. on their vacation. So it's, so it's absolutely <laughs> disgusting. That's the one show at TLC we go, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you have to go to Disneyland and you have to get them to do so many vocabulary sheets. You just have to get those sheets done. Yeah. And, you, and you turn in the homework. People don't tell you this. You turn in the homework directly to the law so you have to show yes right. we as onset teachers turn in the homework to the police yes because yeah. they want to make sure i these hate kids the are police learning. roundups at the end of every week <laughs> I, I hate that. and they don't tell you that the police are spending so much unnecessary time collecting work so sheets. many funds that they send the detective in sometimes to see if there's yes. any cheating it's, because um, it's an I've american writing, thing i've been writing the mayor i mean it's just a complete misuse of funds <laughs> It is a gross misappropriation, and I would argue that's not their jurisdiction. No. I would and, argue that that's not it. I'd and, argue it, yeah. too. They, they shouldn't be doing that. But we do, by law, have to show that every kid, no matter what, even if on set, even if on set is taking them to an excursion, which is maybe a trip yeah. or a Make-A-Wish Foundation trip to Disneyland, they still have to be in school. Um, so that at TLC, we we are um, run and go, as we say it. I have a whiteboard. I have a whiteboard T-shirt. Oh, that I oh. Wear. So I, I don't you need... draw on the T-shirt? Yes. And it, and um, it's just it's less work than bringing around a desk. Right. Totally. Because I'm on the go. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but you're you're um, you're teener. Sarah, Sarah, teener. Sarah Beth teener. Miss teener. teener. So just correct me if I'm wrong. On your shirt in front of little kids, you're drawing just right kind of on your chest area. Or they can draw. Okay, oh so gosh. they come up and they <laughs> yeah. draw. It would be your... hard. It would be hard for me to write on myself. And yeah. not to get too crass, but how thick is the t-shirt? That's crass. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, crass. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for getting crass. I'm around all these crass. boys all the time. I think like a boy. <laughs> you think like a boy? I think like a boy. What you, That's crazy. What kind of things do you think? You're an adult of, woman. I know. I'm an adult woman, and I'm thinking about monster trucks like a little boy. <laughs> what kind of other boy things do you think of? What do you think about? Well, I, what's your favorite kind of food? Oh, my God. Nacho cheese. Oh nacho boy. cheese Takis. What's your favorite makeup brand? Um, Etsy? No. <laughs> That's not very boy. That's what a little boy would say, though. It's a makeup exactly. brand. Exactly. They wouldn't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that isn't the makeup brand of a little boy, but that is the makeup brand of a woman at odds with her own brain. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're clearly confused sort of and you felt some, some, some middle ground. Ah, it's all so perfect. there are still points where I could lock into a woman who's totally lost, but I probably uh, half set the time I have the monologue of, an, of a little boy. Yeah. I'm thinking, plaid t-shirts. Oh, poor thing. Uh, <laughs> what well, are I mean, we talking about? I have a question, actually, for all the onset teachers right here. I... I get frustrated because a lot of people think that what we do isn't teaching. A lot of people think that we're just babysitting, but mm. I know for a fact that I've gone through some teaching breakthroughs in my classroom. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. And, and I wanted to see if you guys have any teacher breakthroughs. You remember well, what's you know, in the studios. one that you went through? Yeah. Well, the one that I went through is that I, uh, really got to the heart of, uh, getting people to understand that Thomas Jefferson was just kind of a normal guy, you know? I, a huge oh, that's the main through. lesson? Was, that was he the, was chill? He had flaws. He was, he was you know, yeah, we idolized. Yeah, he had some pretty big flaws, I would say. So I guess, yeah, where the students coming to you are kind of bringing up all the ama the immense flaws that Thomas Jefferson no, does No, they have. weren't bringing up the flaws. They were idolizing. For some reason, my kids thought the founding fathers were gods, and I think they have conservative parents or something was going on. So it might I just be because they're shooting at night. It all feels like a dream. And you were saying that you were doing <laughs> the I Constitution Mount, in front Mount of them. Mount Rushmore at night must be like <laughs> crazy oh, to study. Gosh, women's, women's history at night. Oof. The amount of things <laughs> that feel <laughs> like a dream for those kids. And sometimes they'll come in and they'll say, wait, you're real? And I'll say, yes. 
<laughs> they're like, I, like they get so surprised. And one time I saw one of them at the grocery store uh, during a hiatus. So awkward. I saw, yeah, but they ran. They ran out because they thought they oh were scared of me. God. And I'm like, you're scared of me. You're a fucking ghoul. You're a ghoul in my classroom. You have barnacles on your eyes. Like I don't but know. But you're because you're their not sleep paralysis. Yes, I'm Steven. their sleep paralysis, Stephen. It's, it's sort of mutual. You're scared of me. I'm scared of you because I'm not used to you with a normal nose. I'm used to you with a swamp nose. Exactly. That swamp nose is her nasty. They're fish. <laughs> That sounds really hard, especially yeah. for a little kid having a paralysis, sleep paralysis demon that looks and sounds like you. I mean, what it, do you that's mean? Crazy. I would. I think if I, that was my sleep paralysis demon, I would be so deeply affected because you're such a normal person. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But it's yeah, so funny. it kind of makes you wonder, like, what's wrong with me? And it's exactly. probably probably makes them think there's a lot more sleep paralysis demons out there. Hundred <clears throat> percent, they're everywhere. Yeah. And I'm a septuplet. Too. So there's wow. six no other ones. Identical. Identical septuplets. <laughs> and so it is scary for them because, and that is scary. I was shopping with my three brothers for a Super Bowl party. And so when this kid saw me, he's only seen me during the night, he saw four of me at once. That was weird for him. That's probably so, a life altering event. Yeah. For me, you were leaving out crucial details of that okay. story. You, because Delito. you didn't tell us that you were one of the Time Magazine's Fantastic Seven. Yeah. When they <laughs> all those seven boys identical. Which, well, look, they, they were having a that was a light news week. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, not to humble myself, but the fact that no. they wrote about the Fantastic Seven as and, seven. And the name that they well, labeled you with. Your mom was such an I'm sorry, an attention hog. She loved the camera. I think they wrote she had such a personality for it that I could see it's a as a if I were reporter i'd be like i want to milk that that yeah. mom is dancing after having seven identical boys exactly. yeah i want to i want to cover that and they wrote it up uh, they wrote it in the week between christmas and new year's eve when nothing's happening yeah and three is before hurricane sandy <laughs> yeah and then after Quiet sandy on the western front <laughs> But you know what you said is so interesting because people don't realize that the kids we're working with are just so different. They're not, I, I, of course, they're kids, and we have to remember that they're kids, right? But like you're saying, you work with them overnight uh, yeah. during night shoots. We're used to kids drinking big coffees. We're used to kids taking smoke breaks. I'm like, it's it's a different version of a kid, right? Because these yeah. kids have. They've been jaded by the by the industry. I mean, they're barely kids. They're talking to you like they're trying to make small talk at a cocktail party most of the time. It's yeah. kind of awkward. No, I'm trying to teach them vocabulary words, and they keep asking me if I want to get lunch. And it's like, <laughs> I don't think you should know that phrase yeah. for my a while. Least, my least favorite thing is when a seven-year-old asks me, do you want to get lunch? Let's right. go grab a lunch. No. I'd love to and catch up and pick your brain. And they look down at their phone, and exactly. they can't schedule it because their yeah. schedule's full, and then you feel like a loser because you're I, not yeah. as busy. Yeah. And I'm like, you should be given lunch. Kids should be given lunch. They shouldn't be getting lunch. You know what I mean? That's no. what's kind of messed up with our industry. You know what's yeah. even worse is doing lunch. Oh. When they say we should do oh, lunch. that breaks oh, yeah. my heart. That means they've been in it for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or when a kid asks me, like, what projects am I working on lately? Ooh. Right in the middle of no. like, I don't know, we're breaking down geography. And I'm like, honey, we could just work on what the size of Louisiana is. Yeah, yeah. I got a literal group project for you right now literal and that you should be turning <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah. Let's work on the, what the size of Louisiana is. Let's work on the size <laughs> what, of it. Are you having them kind of measure a map? Is it, yes, you I, read yes, a map? yes. What is this 21 year old doing in geography measuring <laughs> Louisiana? I'm well, interested. She's, do she's doing it on my chest, remember? Oh, and right, we're in right. line for Splash Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> she's doing and I go, okay, quick, size of Louisiana. And I stick my chest out. So do you have a memorized capitals or, or or is it more of a cartography thing where they have yeah. to draw the lines? I find that as um, I finished the school system only f many a few years ago. And I found- I mean, what was 21, you probably just maybe haven't even graduated I, college yet. I finished, no, I, I did it early, but I'm saying yeah. like I finished it all really fast. And the most unnecessary knowledge I found was capitals. Why do we need to know them? Sure. What I wish I knew, the size of states. I thought Rhode Island was huge. How big is it? It's small. <laughs> <laughs> How many? <laughs> Ten. <laughs> I don't know. That's really anyway, small. It, but I'm saying, like, I, I, so I'm a little off the off the cuff. Sometimes I make my own syllabus. We should talk about syllabuses here. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we I add my own things. I do my own things to the curriculum because sometimes I'm like, you don't need to know that Sacramento is the capital of California. You need to know that California is big. So you're more talking about just general sizes <laughs> than the actual. Big, medium, so small. They don't <laughs> actually have 
have to know tall. the numbers. They have to know your system of the adjective you would use yes. to describe so big, the size. So big, medium, small, and then in, 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 you gave away some interesting information I want to dive into. Small Rhode Island is 10. <laughs> well, that's so. I, I think I got confused. I, in my brain, it's 10, but it's small, right? And oh, you have synesthesia. You think in numbers. Yes, I do. That's why I graduated so fast. Um, but I. But anyway, I... <laughs> that's another stereotype that I think we should we implement yes. is people with synesthesia graduate fast. Yeah. I yeah. think it should be a bigger stereotype. It mm-hmm. should really be. <laughs> People with synesthesia need something coming the list, to them. Huh? They need something. Put it on the list of things we got to do. But anyway, uh, well, let's talk about syllabus. I yeah. would love the idea of talking about a syllabus. I That's yeah. such a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I have a I have a tough time putting a syllabus together because I've found that I can only corral the boys for about uh, six and a half minutes at a time. So I got to use those minutes and really cram them in. And the rest of the time, I'm wheeling out a TV to watch uh, 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 a, a Nicolas Cage movie because that's what they're really mm, into. That's really smart. They're really into that. And we do, um, you know, I try to make it fun. We do uh, Nerf gun fights. I mean, honestly, half of my syllabus is talking about the different methods I'm going to use to wrangle the boys, right? So just FYI, right off the bat, I'm going to use a lasso. I'm going to be using half my arm to scoop. I'm going to be using big magnets to sort of reel you guys Brilliant. in. Like, that's just something I'm going to have to be doing. So that I, I, I spend a lot of time in the first Did time I work with them. you talk to the them. costume designer about adding a magnet into their costume so you could suck them back in like yeah they don't there. like they don't like me over there but okay. but they understand they understand the predicament we sort of had to work around that because they were running into every department just wreaking havoc right I mean, that makes sense let me tell you i watched an episode of nickelodeon the other day and those kids are in puffers they're dressing those yeah. kids like like the layering going on with those kids because it slows jackets. them down because they get all hot in the <laughs> right. studio and mm. so they don't move quite them as out. fast. That's a classic move. Sweat out a kid. I <laughs> had um, one of your boys uh, guest star. Recently. Oh, was it Gavin? Uh, yeah, he played to a Toad Creep. Right, Gav- Gavin yes. is booking yeah. like a library. Gavin's Let me just say, great. Gavin is yeah. booking like a library, and he's starting to learn some swears he shouldn't wear. Yeah. Is that becoming a oh, problem yeah. for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was saying some really gross words. Really, uh, and he insects. but he doesn't really have a handle on how to use them yet like no no, no like no, he'll no. say like i you mother ass yeah you mother ass yeah and i think he means mother he called another girl a tit lip the other day yeah and I was like, what do you mean by tit well lip? i'm giggling yeah. over here you know they're <laughs> i mean and that's hard sometimes you can't yeah. laugh at the kids right you can't laugh but they gotta be careful as they draw louisiana so big it hits my tip lip <laughs> oh you're t- okay oh is that what you refer to as a nipple so <laughs> i'm sorry excuse me that was very crass i'm sorry i no tit it's lip okay. is not I don't think a nipple is the is the lip of a tit. Well, then I what guess, else would it be? I guess in a way it is. I, I guess, guess I, the areola would be the lip of the tit. And so the nipple is the teeth. <laughs> Let's go around. <laughs> okay, wait. I wanted to bring up though. Gavin yes, brought of course, something Gavin, up. Yeah. So I was trying to show him a Nicolas Cage movie because mm-hmm. we we they had just completed their assignment. I was really proud of him. I said, "Let's watch uh, National Treasure," and I was showing them. And he said, "Hold on a minute. This isn't the right version." And he said, usually Nicolas Cage talks about long division. And I realized, yeah. are you pumping in? <laughs> like, I are you overdubbing? That, are you AIing? I wish I was AIing. No, I haven't figured out quite how to do that. So I am doing a live dub of Nicolas <laughs> Cage dub. movies. I am, I'm, I'm behind a sheet <laughs> with a microphone. Oh, you're Wizard of Oz. I'm Wizard of Oz. <laughs> the National <laughs> Treasure. Where so they'll say, I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence, which was signed in 1976. And I sort of pause the screen. 1976? <laughs> That's not good information at all. Louise, this is so much work for you. I know. I am I am in way over my head. You're grabbing them by magnets, putting them in front of a TV. You <laughs> said remote <laughs> and a microphone. <laughs> Can well, we get them wrong giant, information? I got a huge tool belt around my chest just carrying all these objects to sort of get these boys in. And I'm shocked. These boys do not have good media literacy because Nick Cage will be frozen on the screen for five Five minutes while I talk about history and they don't seem to know a thing they're <laughs> twiddling on their phones yeah uh, oh you, the you, phones we got to talk about the phones, phones. Uh, the phones the there are phones. so many apps these days I know I said it before, oh, you, I meant in relation to the kids you just think phones are crazy <laughs> in general oh, those phones I'm a 21 year old woman and I'm like my phones 
Frank, what do you do? I mean, I feel like you're the yeah. oldest person here by far. Oh, yeah. yeah. How's it been? Well, how old are you guys? I'm th- I'm th- I'm uh, 28. I'm 32. Uh, 21. Uh, uh, I'm older, <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> So, uh, what what was the question? Frank, what's your phone policy? So, I have a very interesting phone policy. I actually uh, try to put all the phones at the beginning of the classroom into a bucket. And I put my phone in the bucket, too, in a <laughs> sense of solidarity. Oh, that's a bad idea. <laughs> I immediately see so, what's happening here. So, it's a bad idea. Yeah. It's an immediate bad idea. You don't idea. need to put your phone in the bucket. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to. <laughs> you're the adult <laughs> in this situation. It's a bad idea. So, what happens? I know. Uh, well, there's happens? a bunch of different scenarios that end yeah. up happening. One, they steal my phone from me in the bucket. <laughs> Two... Because I don't have a way to contact anybody, they lock the classroom down and it turns into sort of a Lord of the Fly situation. Yeah. Three, there's another situation where they start pelting the phones at me. Four, that it actually Wait, works. So do they have control of the bucket? Where yeah. does the bucket go? I put the bucket in the middle of the room. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> That's as, a bad as idea. As a sense of... Uh, unionization. <laughs> we are, we are all equal and one, and all of our phones are in the middle in the bucket. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good idea at first on paper, but it doesn't work in practice. But the fourth time, every once in a while, talking about your breakthroughs, the kids will leave the phones and we'll sit around and we'll actually open up our textbooks and open up our hearts. It, it reminds me sometimes when I am dealing with kids who don't have their phones, it reminds me of those videos I've seen of people with Alzheimer's hearing a song from their 20s, and then they they come alive again. That's like the magic of memory. And you like yeah. realize there are kids behind these kids. And you realize it's that there's beautiful like some- when, wow. they have to, when they don't have their phones and we figure out how to get in that zone. Yeah. You see them drop their acting personas, their let's do lunch, their... I've got to get into makeup. Uh, they're my manager. I'm thinking about dropping my manager. And they just start talking about Roblox. It's, yeah, it's amazing. Wow, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. You wow, really just got to break through. Mm-hmm. Can, I, can I confess something to you guys that I do with the phones? Yeah. Instead of teaching language, I've downloaded, du- I've downloaded Duolingo. Oh. Onto their phones? Yeah. And then I just take a smoke break. So you just hope that they're doing <laughs> yeah. Duolingo? Yeah. And that's what I heard. So, so you, that's different than Duolingo, right? Because that's Duolipa's <laughs> new language app. Duolingo. Duolingo. Is, so uh, I love Duolingo. this app. I heard Duolipa's doing it. It's well, yeah, fantastic. it's a huge launch. I've been learning yeah. hot English on it. It's sort of like a, a a type of English that's used by like sexy bisexual women. Yeah. And um, it's it's been it's revolutionized my life. Oh, wait, my mom was a sexy bisexual woman. I grew up learning hot English. I'm, I'm fluent. Do you guys want to speak it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You should do it. Yeah. Harry Styles. You're so funny. Matcha. <laughs> What's your name? Zebulon. What's oh, your name? darling. You don't even know, darling. Oh, my God. I'm so tired. Are you always tired? <laughs> darling, what is that in your hair, darling? Oh my god, Moose. What's in your hair? It's sticking up. Glitter, darling. No way. Glitter. Glitter? I have no idea what they're saying. But that we was were hot. actually just we were just We were talking about forth. math, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about math. We were talking about math. We were just talking about general ideas on math. Yeah. Concepts of math. I love math. We were talking about the Fibonacci sequence. I gotta actually. say, you guys yeah, are the, yes, so... Yes, I love the Fibonacci sequence. Those numbers and the way they line up. It's so interesting. Fibonacci sequence is the best thing to ever happen to mathematics in the world. It's got me yeah. so excited and nothing will get, ever get me so excited as Fibonacci sequence. It's the perfect golden symmetrical rule. We don't don't talk enough about the Fibonacci sequence. Let's no. talk about it. And that's a stereotype I would like to add. Is the <laughs> teachers yeah, the Fibonacci talk, se- love the Fibonacci sequence? Yeah. Oh. So the- can I ask a question? Because I'm running to the, into this in my own life a yeah, couple times. Try. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> I thought this room was receptive, but that felt. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. What do you guys do when one of your kids is canceled? Oh. Because oh. it's probably happened to all of us. Yeah. Well, oh my God. Yes. When one of my kids gets canceled, actually, I have a protocol from high ups, which is don't let them cry because they've been in makeup for 12 hours. <laughs> so it's, really, it's so I have to talk them out of it from being sad. 
I think that's the hardest thing because yeah. mm. we can't lose the we can't lose the seaweed that's on their face. Mm. Mm. It's um, tough to watch all the other kids start turning on that one kid too. Just that's like, brutal yeah. too because it becomes this hierarchy thing, right? Yeah. Where they're like, "Well, we're better than you because we haven't been canceled." But it yeah. and they know too much. It's like you say something stupid on Roblox, it never goes away, right? Yeah. It never yeah. goes away. That kid, yeah, that kid. Uh, you're, yeah, Tyler. He what Tyler. did he? He said uh, Hillary Clinton, twenty twenty four, right on Roblox, and it just ruined his Poor kid, career. He did. Did, he thing. did, but he sort of he said it in a he said it in a mocking way that sounded just so so rude, and nobody knew. It really offended both sides, and yeah. right, they, and so he was canceled by both, um, you know, Hillary lovers and Hillary haters because neither one could decide in uh, which way he was saying right. an said, awful they, place yeah. to be. They said we yeah. don't know what to do with this, and it pisses me off. Yeah, mm. so this is just yuck. And That's Nickelodeon the worst place to be. With that. Nickelodeon no. does not mess with the Clintons. No, and that's part of the thing that I try and teach in my in my uh, initial class is, you know, don't get political on yeah. Roblox. Don't get political. Nothing yeah. ever ends well. Mm. If you want to get political, I have a film I can pop in, and uh, 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 and uh, Twenty Seven Dresses is going to teach you all about that. Whoa, those Twenty Seven Dresses. Those boys <laughs> going from movie. National Treasure to Catherine <laughs> Heigl's. 27 dresses Whatever believe it or not the well room. here's the thing i don't give them the full cut of 27 Good dresses it's only the james marsden scenes i love that when they, they sing like benny him. and the jets they actually really respond to him i he can has see how like that's a, a counting hit. thing you're trying yeah. to count how many up to Good 27 that's can good. i ask you so when you put the sheet is the sheet hung up in another side of the classroom or do you cover yourself in it? but aren't you in a trailer <laughs> explain this so i'm doing both right okay. i have the sheet up and then for extra measure i'm doing charlie ba brown sheet ghost uh just for safety okay and so you're wearing a sheet behind a sheet <laughs> i'm doing two sheets so they'll never find out with a remote in one hand and a mic in the other and a remote in the one hand and the mic in the other and sometimes it's hard to see in the double sheets and so i do trip and sometimes they'll hear a lot of like ah boom, 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 boom. and that's because i do it right before the stairs so they don't know <laughs> and so i do hear them sometimes going is this a real movie uh and that's the only <laughs> time it breaks the illusion well, when Gavin was in my class, he thought it was real. So Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, that's heartbreaking great. when the kids find out about Santa. Heartbreaking when the kids find out about the sheet. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, must just and absolutely destroy their world. It really does. And then it's so hard on the show. You can tell their hearts aren't in it as it's much. It's also heartbreaking to see when you see them. I know this before I did TLC stuff a lot more. Uh, uh, real actors instead of, you know, reality. But you see... When they have to learn that their agents and their managers aren't their best friends. Oh, mm. that's so hard. Because yeah. they think it's like fun mommy and fun daddy, right? It's the, it's the managers and the mm -hmm. agents that are going to like give them candy, right? And meet them in, on, on set and walk them to the Nickelodeon after party. And I think a lot of them think that their reps are like their fun, fun mom. Yeah. And right. they're not. No, no. Mm -mm. no. And it's no. so sad to see them see that slowly. Have you guys ever lost a kid? Meaning they left the industry? Yeah. 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 Plenty. yeah. There used to be a seventh boy. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty devastating. He uh, really, he said he wanted to learn at school. So he lost him to the public school system. Oh, and yeah. with your system, he's not gonna. So. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. He had to go somewhere else and it was Poor really thing. tragic, but it's interesting. You brought up agents because I think another thing that we might struggle with as onset teachers is uh, relating to the stage parents and yeah. the kids <laughs> reps. Um, and I, I'm wondering how that experience is for you guys. Cause it's, it's tough because uh, the parents also feel that they can teach and they also want to watch you. And I, I do have some parents teach, uh, sitting in on the lessons and they're oh, harder to fool for sure. Yeah, they're absolutely. harder to fool. So has, has that ever, has that ever been a problem for you guys? Well, I have this one parent who just sits in the lessons and yells no the whole time. <laughs> Poor thing, Eugene. He disagrees. Frank, he disagrees Frank. with everything Mr. I try Frank. to teach. Poor thing. Yeah, what does he tough. take umbridge with? He just takes umbridge with either my <laughs> voice. What are you guys taking umbridge with these days? I want to ask that later, but go we'll ahead. Ask it in a little bit. Yeah. He takes umbridge with basically how I'm teaching. I'll say, okay, we're going to do multiplication. He goes, no. I go, okay. Uh, well, we're going to... Uh, push through <laughs> let's do 12 times 12 and the kids go 144 he goes nah 
<laughs> it's just tough. It's not fun. I mean, that's what's hard about the set. In, in general, it's not the kids. It's always the parents, right? Yeah. Because when you're seven years old, you can stick a kid in a car and say, this guy's going to teach you something, and then the kid will believe you. Like, oh, and that, let's, that and let's try so. not to do that. I think let's yeah. try not to <laughs> stick a kid in a car I'm and say, as an this kid will example. teach you yeah. something. And the guy in my example, by the way, it was Albert Einstein. So it would have been fine. Wait. Oh, okay, that okay. makes sense. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to do the math on this. So is Albert Einstein <laughs> sticking the kid He's in the car? In the car? Or is he Somebody in... sticks their a kid in a car and they say, this guy's going to teach you something. The guy in the car, it's Albert Einstein. And this is all an example. I'm making. just saying no funny business in that example. <laughs> I'm just saying there was no funny business. And is this based on a historical event or is yes. this just some court? It's based okay. on a letter. A okay. letter? That's, yes. That's fair. <laughs> Thank you. I thought that was a funny yes. business example. This is just, you no guys can come to my class example. if you want to learn. I teach the kids on the last day because it's just it, just showing how impressionable kids are. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if, if a parent stops and, and changes that opinion, that's where things get a little screwy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I've had, I've had um, children of divorce. Well, parents of divorce. I've had like some moms be like, will you tell my kid that dad's a bad Dad's bad. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's really Do you put tough. that in the lesson plan? Well, I mean, my lesson plan's on the go. Did <laughs> right? you write it on your whiteboard? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I heard with you also that dads are constantly trying to draw on your whiteboard as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I haven't figured that out yet because I really welcome everyone because sometimes they'll send the kids to school, right? And like you're, you're, you're talking about on um, Home uh, Extreme Makeover. And they send the kids are in school with the dad there, right? With the mom there. And yeah, I had a whiteboard on my ass too. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to get rid of that because it was just not fun. But on my chest, yeah, it's happening a lot. But I'm figuring it out. And also the people at Disneyland have been so nice. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'm glad they're nice. Good. Good people. I'm glad they're nice. They're good people over there. Yeah. They're good people. I heard you're like, uh, when you go to Disneyland, you're like when those old men come up to the little girls and they're like, oh, I'm so when the girls dress as princesses and they're like, can you send my autograph book? There's like those Disney cast members. Have you oh, guys heard yeah. about that? Oh, yeah. I heard they come to you and they say, can I sign your autograph? Yes. And I go, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. And I go, yeah. that's Rhode Island. Yeah, bat them away like flies. Yeah, but it's crazy. I mean, do you guys do you guys deal with your kids sometimes being super famous, and then people around you know well, that you're so? With just them? to go back, a beautiful full moment story. We were talking about stereotypes that should be true. Mm -hmm. One stereotype I would love to push <laughs> is that the more famous you are, the lower in grades you are. So if you're yeah. Ten yeah. level fame, you might still just be stuck in second grade. I would love to do that. You know, I would it, love to push that. Where I went Let's to high school, it. if you didn't pass your classes, you couldn't um, do Dope. extracurriculars, and that's just not true on set. I do wish that. Well, because students... their extracurriculars are keep is why they're there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but it should be a system like uh, uh, yeah. you should get a line from your scene deducted for every problem you get yeah. wrong. That's tried, some legislation I'm trying to push through. I tried to hold back this girl who was playing a Firefly ghoul, and she uh, got me fired for a day. No, she um, just I for said, one day. I said, I said, this this girl doesn't know how to read. She doesn't know how to write. She actively chooses not to learn in my class and and we really shouldn't have her on set if she's not going to learn and they said well you're out of here and that was it that's really yeah. wow that's, God, that's devastating how'd you get how'd you come back uh they they couldn't did you find beg and else. plead did you no beg and plead? no i didn't beg they couldn't find anyone else to, do, to work nights the night teachers are just a very different type of person oh yeah no, they're I, I, they're they're a freaky bunch you're the, one of the more well-adjusted ones i've met a lot Thank of them you. you ask them a question and they go no right no yeah. no no no, no. they always have big lanterns i don't i don't use a lantern i yeah. use a, i use the light on my phone Oh, that's good. that's honestly really cool. Oh, they don't provide light they for you. Yeah, light the set. Well, because people don't know it on night shoots when they're like, "Oh, you have to go with the teacher." Usually, you have to have a big lantern. You say, "Come with me, kids," and they follow what? you to the portable. Why don't you just put it on your chest? Oh, I I don't want to wear light on my chest, <laughs> and I just don't use my chest for stuff like that. Weird. <laughs> I guess in summation, maybe what we should go around and do is give kids advice. Great. Great. If you want to be in the industry, here's the advice from the onset teachers. Here's right? what we Let's do. Let's do that. Okay. Good acting advice and industry advice, you mean? Anything at all. It's your your <laughs> call. <laughs> How to hmm. make it in this industry. 
industry. Let's advice, see how to advice, make it. How, how to, to make, it. make it. How to make it. You Four know, set teachers industry, telling you how to industry, make it. Industry advice. Industry. So, Let me see. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's interesting. I guess I never really thought about what happens before they get to set. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I don't have any advice on how to make it in the industry. Yeah, I, I guess I can't help you. I guess yeah. I certainly have. I guess have I it. have nothing to say to you. I'm just here to teach you. Well, okay. Uh, I and I would say on set, slow down. Life slow is down. life yeah. is a, a a marathon. It's not a sprint. You don't need to be running around doing donuts on your little children's mini car. Yeah. There's so much more life left to live, and you're knocking over grips, and they're getting pissed off. So That's just so try true. and stay away. Those from grips that. are too busy being yeah. gossip grips sometimes. Um, oh, here's one on set. Um, eat your gummies before you shoot, not before you come into my classroom. Really good. Yeah. Um, I got I got one. Bringing your report card to the audition is going to do nothing. We have no power. We, um, we, we can't advice. do mm -hmm. anything for you. You'll have to bring it to the cops. That's, You're going to yeah. have to bring it to the law. The amount of people that call me and say, hey, my kid has the best grades. He should have a role on this. I say, I'm actually not here for that. I am not a way in. Yeah, you're like, does your kid look good in prosthetics? Then yeah. call me. I'm a way out of labor laws for the set. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. I'm not here. I'm, I'm honestly there for the studio. I'm not there for the kids. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my advice would be uh, just uh, just watch out. It just don't. You, you can be nice to your teachers. I think you can be nice to your teachers. It's not a problem. We're not here to fight you. We're not against you. We're your allies on set. So the teaching time is not the rebelling time to get over whatever you're feeling from set. I would say it's difficult for you because unfortunately you do just sort of have a vibe that uh, if I were a child, I would want to attack. Yeah. You feel I, like someone I just want to tip over. Absolutely. I've gotten this my whole life. And yeah. thank you. It's a vibe <laughs> that if you push me, I will fall. If you touch me, I will crumble. If you pinch me, I will say, ow, come on. So I'm easily bullied. It's been a problem my whole life and kids love it. Uh, I'm like reverse barney in a way yeah um, poor thing yeah kids don't want to hug me they want to kick me um can we kick you just once no come just on, once. can we just kick you let once kick oh you, let us kick you. you got yourself in a situation let us again kick you. let me kick oh, you with my right foot it's Eugene, a projector come on please come on darling let me hit you darling oh, oh you oh, darling Frank. oh no let me kick you it's so let me kick you and yet i'm so big expo marker cut thump your left foot is one big expo marker? For kids to use on my breast. Okay, <laughs> now I gotta see this. This has been Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists answering the question, now that's why they call it showbiz. We'll see you next time. Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists is an improvised Hollywood roundtable podcast created, performed, and produced by Kylie Brakeman, Jeremy Colhane, Angela Giratana, and Patrick McDonald. Music is by Gabriel Ponton. The opinions expressed on this podcast do not reflect the opinions of anyone who works on it, not even the performers, because this is an improvised podcast and we're stupid. Full video versions of AOA, AOA, AOA are available on YouTube, so please like and subscribe and leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. That's all for now. Good night, Hollywood. <laughs>